Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. Today we're going to talk about the Java if statement. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website to provide a kind of in-depth explanation on this here. I'm going to go ahead and hit begin. We'll scroll down to my if statement tutorial here. Okay, so basically, um, a statement in Java is a complete unit of execution terminated with a semicolon. A statement can be as simple as a unit of execution like int a equals 100, semicolon, or system.out.println, hello world, semicolon. Statements inside of a method are executed in a top-down order. Um, but what if you want to change the order of how the statements are executed, or even prevent statements from being executed based on certain conditions? Um, Java pro provides a set of control flow statements to perform that very task. The most basic of control flow statements is the if statement. Let's go over the if statement. And if you're a little confused at this point in time, don't worry about it. I guarantee you by the end of this tutorial you will understand how to use if statements properly. The if statement evaluates a condition to determine if the result is either true or false. The conditional test is contain, contained inside the set of parentheses located directly after the Java keyword if. If the condition evaluates to be true, then the statement or statements inside the code block are executed. The code block braces are optional for execution of just a single statement. So here's what we have. We have our Java keyword if, then we've got our opening parenthesis and our closing parenthesis, and then we've got our conditional test inside of there. If this equals true, then everything inside of this code block is executed here. Code block is the beginning opening brace followed by the closing brace, right? Now, what if we want another statement or statements to execute based on the condition evaluating to false? That is where the else Java keyword comes into play. So we've got our if and then our conditional statement inside of the parentheses. So if this evaluates to true, then this code block will execute. If Java sees this other keyword right after that, else it'll go ahead and if, it, if this is false, right, this will not execute and the else exists, it'll go ahead and execute everything inside of this code block, okay? Let's talk a little bit about this conditional statement. The conditional test can be performed using one of the Java relational operators such as equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, or not equal to. All right, let's scroll down a little bit and we're just gonna cut the uh, source code for this tutorial out here and we'll paste it into a notepad here in a second because you don't wanna watch me type this in for 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna hold down my left mouse button hit the down arrow on my keyboard and that'll highlight stuff in a control manner. We'll right click on this and select copy. You can also hit control C and um, we'll move this off screen here. Okay, let's go ahead and go to start, search, type in CMD. Or if you're in Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start and then run, type in CMD. It pulls up our DOS prompt, type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directories. Uh, backslash indicates, let's switch to the root. We're going to go and type in MD, which is short for make directory Java. I already have that folder, but that'll create it for you if you don't. We'll do CD Java, then we'll do make directory if statement, right? And then CD if statement. And then we're going to type in notepad if statement.java. If statement.java is the name of the Java source code file. Must end in a Java extension is case sensitive, also known as a compilation unit. Okay, um, we're going to go, we can either right click and select paste or we can hit control V to copy in all of this stuff here. Let's go ahead and save this here. So basically the, the class definition name is if statement and the whole, think of it this way, like we've got our opening brace here and that opening brace is selecting, is basically specifying a code block 
for this class definition. The class definition begins right here, right? So if we scroll all the way down, here is our closing brace, matches exactly here. Now our main method also has its opening code, opening brace to indicate the beginning of the code block. And the main method starts all the way over here. So its corresponding code uh, uh, closing brace, or end of the code block is going to be right there. So that's kind of the way indentation matters so much, especially when you're talking on a, you know, a method that, that's this long, it becomes a lot, lot easier to read and understand when everything's indented properly. Okay, now one of the things I said is that Java is a top-down language. So when we enter this main method here, it executes all uh, statements. Statements, of course, are terminated with a semicolon from the top down. So I'll execute this and this and this and this and this and this. And um, basically what we've got here is We've got an identifier, current speed, also known as a variable, and this is a declaration statement, right? We keep coming to that word statement here. So basically this declares integer current speed. Uh, we had discussed in previous tutorials a default value will be assigned to zero. So we've got a current speed, we've got a speed limit, and a speed difference for this tutorial. Now we've got an assignment statement here. We're gonna take current speed, that identifier, and we're gonna go ahead and assign it the value of 72. We're going to decide the speed limit, 65. And then we're going to print out the speed limit is plus the speed limit identifier value, and you are traveling plus your current speed value. Okay? Now let's talk about the if statement here. So here's our syntax. We've got our if Java keyword, our opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, and this is where our conditional test is going to occur. So if current speed equals 65, execute everything in the following code block, right? So um, our current speed is 72, so this is going to be false. So these two lines are not going to execute, okay? Our next if statement says if current speed is greater than 65, which it is, that'll evaluate to true, then everything inside of this code block will execute. And it'll execute top down just like, just because Java is a top down executing language. So it'll execute this statement, it'll execute this statement, which simply basically calculates the difference, which is current speed, which is 72 minus 65. So our speed difference is seven. And then we have a nice single line comment here. And then we have what's called a nested if statement. So we're already into the code block here. Now we can determine and even, you know, control the flow of the program even further by having another if statement inside of there. So if the speed difference is greater than or equal to five, we're gonna go ahead and display, you know, better slow down, right? Um, and here's where we come to our first else, right? So if this evaluates to false, it'll go ahead and execute the else statement, right? And it'll just print this here. Now, of course, since our difference in this particular example is seven, it's going to go ahead and execute this and not touch this. So if this had evaluated to false, it would go ahead and execute here. Obviously it doesn't, evaluates to true, so it executes everything in this code block, okay? And then we got another if statement down here. After it falls out, I guess is the best way to describe it, you know, with top down, it executes this, executes this, executes this, and then it falls out of this code block here, right? Now we're still executing top down in the main method there. If current speed is less than 65, it'll go ahead and print this. Obviously, obviously that's not, not the case, so that's, that'll evaluate to false, so that won't print either. And what we're gonna do is, underneath this dashed line, we'll go into a little bit more detail here. So we're just gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna compile it. We're gonna ignore everything underneath that dashed line for now. I'm um, gonna go ahead and clear screen, Java C, if statement, we'll go ahead and compile that. Type in Java call the if statement, invoke the if statement as the technical term for it, the if statement class, and it printed exactly what we thought it would. The speed limit is 65, you are traveling 72. You are traveling over the speed limit. Better slow down, you're at risk for getting a speeding citation. If we pop back here, you could see this line just executed because of top down. Um, this did not do, this did not print, that did not print. This did, because once we, current speed greater than 65, that's true, so it said you are traveling over the speed limit. We did another conditional test on the if state, another if statement here, 
and that it equals true, so it printed this, okay? And that's all above this line here. Now, let's talk about some other ways the if statement can be optimized. Um, and one of those is by using what's called if, else if, else syntax, okay? So the way this works is we'll do basically the same thing we did up here, only I won't, won't include this little nested if statement here. So if the current speed is equal to 65, if this evaluates to true, it'll execute these lines. If not, it moves past the end of the code block and does what's called an else if. So if this, then it tests this conditional statement here. If current speed is greater than 65, which is true, it'll go ahead and execute this. Everything after that code block will be completely ignored. It won't even go into these tests here, okay? So that'll basically stop execution right there. Now, if this had been equal to false, then it would go ahead and default to this right here, okay? So that's, that's fairly self-explanatory on that. Um, as you can see, we would expect with the current speed being 72, that it would only execute this particular statement right here. And uh, that's, that's what we'll see right here. Um, you know, it obviously had this, uh, this print line right here, if, else, if, right? And you are traveling over the speed limit. That's exactly what would occur here. Last thing I want to talk about is what I said about um, the code block being optional. Uh, the code block being uh, defined by the opening brace and the closing brace. Okay, so this will print out our dashed line here, an optional code block syntax, curly opening and closing braces. Code blocks indicate, are indicated by a pair of curly braces and they are optional uh, only if you are only going to execute a single statement after the if statement. So the way this works is if current speed equals 65 and that equals true, then go ahead and execute this, right? Um, current speed is greater than 65, execute this. Current speed is less than 65, execute this. The reason why I stuck this in here is because as you learned from previous tutorials, Java does not care about lines, it doesn't. It just cares about semicolons terminating statements here, right? So that's why you can do this. And here is another example of not including code blocks, but including the else with it too as well. And you can do the else if and so on and so forth there. So if this is equal to true this, and that equals true, then do this. Otherwise, do this, else do that, okay? Um, so if we pop back to here, you can see uh, you are traveling over the speed limit, you are speeding, right? And that's exactly what we were expecting here. So let's go ahead and toy around with changing this initial initial value up here. The value of the identifier current speed, let's go ahead and change that to 68, right? Uh, by changing it to 68, we should actually, instead of, everything will be the same, we're still speeding, but we should execute minor speeding instead of better slow down. And instead of should, we actually will. We'll go ahead and save this, we'll clear the screen, Java C, Call the Java compiler on the if statement.java, which is our Java source code file, and then we'll call Java the if statement, right? Uh, class. And you can see here everything is the same except for minor speeding, just like most other drivers on the road. And that worked out just the way we wanted to, because our new speed difference would evaluate down to three instead of seven. So that would cause this else to print right here because this speed difference is greater than five. If speed difference is greater than five, speed difference is three, so that'll evaluate to false. It'll go ahead and print this line, just as we expected. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to 65. And let's clear the screen. And run it. Speed limit is 65, you're traveling 65, you're traveling exactly the speed limit, good driving. Exactly the speed limit, good driving. You are traveling exactly the speed limit, you are not speeding. You don't see good driving down here on this last section there, and there's a reason for that. Because once again, you can only execute a single statement if you choose not to include the code block, opening brace and closing brace, right? So you are traveling at exactly the speed limit. If we were to go ahead and put, um, 
system got out that print line. Good driving. If we were to put this right here, right? And even though we tab this in or we do whatever we want, you have to remember Java doesn't care about lines. It just basically, if you omit the open and closing brace, it will say, I'm only going to execute the next statement. The ex next statement terminates right there at that semicolon. This right here has nothing to do with this conditional statement. It would just print it out irregardless. This is actually what it would look like right here, right? It would just go ahead and print good driving, whether or not it doesn't, there's no conditional statement. This is actually part of just normal top-down execution of the Java method up there, okay? So that's the reason why I don't have that on there. Once again, if you're gonna omit it, you can only do one statement. If you're gonna omit the, the code block curly braces there, okay? Uh, let's come back here and let's change the speed limit to like 52. Okay, let's save that. Now we're under the speed limit. Let's clear our screen. Java C, the, let's compile the uh, source code file. Let's uh, run the, let's call the if statement class. And the speed limit is 65, you are traveling 52, you are traveling under the speed limit. Same thing, you are traveling under the speed limit, you are traveling under the speed limit, you are not speeding. This you are not speeding, of course, came from down here on our, um, on this particular else statement right here. This failed out because current speed is 52, that equals false. Didn't execute this line, and it did execute this line. Okay, once again with the else, you can only have a single line in there too as well. You can't have multiple lines unless you put in a curly brace. You can, as a matter of fact, do something like this. If I put in the curly brace here, and I put in the curly brace here, and um, I do system.out.println. Uh, good job, right? Yay, you're not speeding. Okay, uh, you can mix and match this sort of syntax too as well. Let's go ahead and compile this. Um, let's clear the screen. Oops, I have a typo in there. Save that. So you can see, you are not speeding, good job. That worked out well there. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Close out of that. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.